we're going to talk about Linux packages and there's two main types of packages in Linux there's the Red Hat package and there's the Debian package which is .deb which is what we're going to be focusing on in this I think Deb is more common um, seems like more distributions use it and we're going to be talking about what they are and how to create them so if you're familiar with Windows there's many ways to put software on Windows and there's also many ways to do it with Linux uh, but Microsoft has a whole bunch of different ones you know they've got the, the uh, installer files they've got the CDs they've got all these different things Debian makes software well Linux in general makes software installation much more easy to do because they have a standardized installation process sure you could create a zipped up archive a compressed GZ file and distribute your stuff that way but that's not as that's not going to be as easy to use as a package it's not going to be as standard as a package packages have a little bit more well they can enforce where things go make things go where they're supposed to be um, and they have a whole process that they can just run that allows them to just go through the whole process of installing things much more easily than the zip file system it's kinda like the way they do the installer files on Windows only on Linux as well everyone who creates and contributes software to Linux is expected to conform to the same for them to put it in their repository for Linux to have it in the repository you have to say I am releasing this under one of their standard end user license agreements instead of like like say with Microsoft everyone creates their own so you have to agree to the EULAs on each and every time with this one here you read a few of them when you first install the system you can go in there and read them later on and for the most part they're there you know they're using the same ones over and over again so it makes it much easier to install 2000 programs over the course of just a couple hours if even that on Linux because of the packaging system so when we can create a package that meets that standard things can move a lot more quickly and these are useful for either archiving new programs or distributing them as well if you want to hand them off to a friend it'd be easier if it's on a dev package than it is that you have to give them a whole bunch of instructions on how to unzip it and all this the computer already knows how to handle a dev package he needs to get in there as root and install it so difference with that huge difference um, and then you've got standards on where it all went to you can find it again and you can use this for more than just programs uh, source codes uh, data files documentation all kinds of stuff can be distributed using dev packages it's just a package of files that is meant to usually accompany a program but it doesn't necessarily need to as we're going to see on here I intentionally use this package to not include a program for that purpose but I used a lot of the standards that you would need to use to put a program in there um, so let's just take a quick look here and see what we need to do for the structure okay you're going to create a folder that is named everything that the package should be named uh, with the exception of the .deb extension on your folder and we'll have an example of this uh, but it's going to be named with the name of your package that's whatever you're calling this underscore and the version dash the revision underscore and the architecture and as you'll see I have all for my architecture uh, you can use all or you can use any to mean it's architecture independent architecture means what type of processor what how many bits what type of you know what type of instruction set is it supposed to be that's particularly necessary if you are installing uh, a program that is compiled 
and already in machine code form, it's going to conform to a particular architecture. But if you're installing something that's like Python or some other type of scripting language like that, yeah, really don't need it. Uh, so now, so that's the folder, and then in the root of the package is going to be a sample of the root of the target file system. So if you need something to go into a particular folder, you create that folder inside of the folder that we created with that name. Uh, but there's also going to be a folder in there capitalized, that's very important, um, a folder named Debian, and that's going to be right there directly inside of your folder we created to create our package. And then there will be a file named control in Debian, in that Debian uh, folder, and there could be four scripts in there as well. And that control file is going to have a number of fields that describe the package. And I'll show you some examples of that, but it would be good to look up the documentation. Debian are the ones that maintain this. So go to the Debian documentation on the Debian website, the people who make the Debian distribution of Linux, they're the ones who set the standard for this. Everyone else who's using Debian for their distribution, they conform to the Debian standards that they set. So they're the authoritative source. They can tell you, if I was going to go through every single field in here, we would be here for probably eight hours. And I don't think anyone wants to watch one video for eight hours. So I'm going to show you the general gist of how to create a package and if you want to learn all the details and make a real good professional package that is meant to go in the repository you should go there and study more but this will be the basics of how to do it all right so the file named control and Debian we discussed that um, there's also I mentioned up to four scripts they also have to have execute permissions and these are uh, shell scripts <coughs> so be ready for them to be run. They've got to be written in shell language. These are going to be a series of shell commands. And we've got uh, preinst, which is for runs before the installation. So after it's unpacked, but before it actually, um, I mean, it has to read that, that thing there, but before it really puts all the files into place, it's going to read the package and it's going to run that and then it's not really going to be putting everything in there and actually doing the installation process until it's done with the preinst. Then once you're done installing it, what is it going to do after we're done with the installation? Then it's got to run postinst for post installation. Um, so once everything's in place, then you can run a script that could do any other things that you want it to do. Um, then we've got P. Uh, Pre-RM. RM is for removal. Runs before removal. So as it's thinking about removing it, it's going to run that. Then it's going to remove the files. And then after it's done, any other cleanup can be put in post-RM file. Uh, so these are going to be shell commands that are in these. So they've all got to have execute permissions, and they would all be right in that Debian file right next to that control file. Um, and these are commands that you will use once you've created that whole folder. Um, and this will create, and this lower one would be to install, and this would be done as root, or as, you, know, you, you could use sudo for it, or get in there as root. And you can install a package just like any other package. That's the point with that. Um, but here, this is the the program you're going to need to create a Debian package, make sure you have the Debian uh, package uh, development software installed. That way you have this command. And then we've got to have um, the package builder. And then this is telling it to build a package. And this is an option that is very standard. And this, for what I was doing on this, you really don't actually need to use that option. But what it does is it makes root the owner and the group. It sets every single file that's going to be in this package to be owned and grouped as root. So that means that you will always have 
that user existing because if you use otherwise it stays as your account and if your user ID does not match on that system it could cause problems so by making it all root and giving everyone permission to use it f as root then you have a, a uh, that's going to work out a lot better that's generally the standard practice that's why most of your files outside of what you work with outside of your home directory all of your programs they're usually owned by root and they're usually under the root group that's why this is what they do with packages so now let's take a look at uh, our sample package and that is going to be uh, right in here so you see we got the package name underscore version dash revision underscore and I used all because this is just a text file and it does not matter as long as it goes on Linux it's not gonna hurt anything and in here we are going to have this is our Debian folder and this is home so this is gonna put something in a home directory right off the root this would be representing the root of the target system that it's gonna install to this is all gonna look up home and this is going to go to my user account which yeah if that does not exist I might have some problems and it's going to put something in my pictures folder which is a text file text art it's going to put that in my pictures file any number of files could be put in with a package it could have multiple executables it could have no executables it could have documentation with it it could have source codes with it uh, but generally you want to keep it down to size for the functionality that it that you're expecting to use it for so now let's take a look at that control uh, files and I did not put the scripts in because I mentioned them before uh, and we won't really need any scripts on this so but here we have package and the package name package name was my package um, the version is going to be in here my architecture also has to be in here um, it does want you to have a maintainer and this should be in the, the format of name and inside these carrots just like if you were going to email somebody the email address and then these guys they say they're optional but I think here these are very wise to add um, especially if you're planning on pulling these out of your own repository uh, it will tell your uh, systems what to do with those um, what to do with this package where to put that where to organize that and how to handle it too uh, essential is an optional field for sure you only need that if it's going to be a yes it's a boolean field no or yes essential means that the it tells the package manager on the target system if essential is yes it won't allow it to be uninstalled it can be upgraded but it's not supposed to allow it to be removed it's a safety feature so that way if you're dealing with a kernel or something really critical then you know the package manager itself for example yeah um, that would be essential um, priority generally you're going to want optional unless you're working on some major component of your system uh, so generally they're going to expect that if you're going to upload this to the Debian repository you should uh, make sure that your your priority should be optional um, only stuff that's really really should be there that standard stuff should be everywhere and probably that Debian's approved to be marked as standard should be marked as standard and there's a couple of other priorities above that uh, for more critical stuff but standard would mean it be on a standard installation disk so if you want to do the full standard installation it's going to try and pull in all standard packages as well and then this is going to be uh, the category if you use a graphical front end and you see over to the side you got the whole you know which category are you going to pull it in from this is what you're looking at when you call a uh, when you're downloading your packages you will sometimes say hey I only want ones from certain archive sections 
So, you know, contrib or, you know, whatever other, there's three main ones, and that's one of those three. Uh, and here we have our description. And down in here, we've got even more of a description, a longer description that we can put down here. And notice that space, that needs to be there. So, uh, so that's the control file. And now we're going to go ahead and take a look and see what happens when we build this control file or when we build this package. So this is the package. That's all you need to make a package. Files that you're going to put in there are just going to be, this is the, the root target and that Debian fo folder there. And you do want, uh, once again, I just wanted to make sure that we get this. These guys here are marked as required. So is the description as marked as required. I would definitely add section and priority. Essential is up to you. Um, I like to make sure that it knows it's not essential, but it already knows by default. So it's up to you if you want to add that. But now we're going to build this. And here's our command. Right? We've got, uh, we're going to build our package. And we are going to, yeah, well, build it. Now, this is our package builder. And we're telling it to build. And we're telling it uh, to set everything in there as root. That's probably not necessary because, like I said, we're just adding a file to my own account. Um, and then we are going to do um, the package folder name. We need to pass that to it. And since I'm in the same folder with it, I don't need to go from the root and go on in. I just need to make sure that this is pointed from wherever I'm working at that folder. So we're going to do that. And it says building, and it returned me this. No errors were returned. That means I apparently did everything correctly. And that means I've also got a package sitting right here that is waiting to be installed uh, through any of the package installers that I would wish to use. Thank you for watching.